All right, so I'm going to channel Metatron and we are going to talk about inner healing. I'll see you at the end. Good evening. We are Metatron and today we are going to talk about inner healing. So allow us to share a little bit about our perspective on what do we mean by that and why this topic is so important at this point of time. Now, many of you who are into spirituality for quite some time, you understand that the whole point of spirituality is a spiritual way of living, which means you embody the spiritual principles in your life. Now, what is the point of doing all that? You may want to explore spirituality for different reasons, like... Different reasons, like you may be having experiences like astral projections, lucid dreams, or even encounters with extraterrestrials that you are not able to understand. And maybe this is a path you came into spirituality. Or maybe you are experiencing deep depressions and extreme challenges in your life which you couldn't find answers for in traditional ways of healing. So spirituality cannot be condensed in something simple as this is it. Each person is their own path own path towards God or all that is or whatever you used to call. 
now as this channel believes in personal development you may want to keep your microphone on mute there is a lot of echo coming in thank you so as we were saying as this channel is more interested in the path of self development this is one of the path that you can use for spiritual development there are many paths and if you are attracted to this channel probably there is something for you to take or learn from this path <clears throat> so those who are into any kind of personal development self development therapy or any kind of coaching once you start the process of self discovery and going within you will discover the more you get to know yourself the more you get to know all that is because you are an aspect of source and hence this is the point where your inner exploration via your traditional methods of therapy and coaching merges with spiritual development because both bring you together into this point of self discovery self actualization and also inner healing so why do you want to do inner healing well your collective have lots of trauma not only at the collective level but also on the individual level and many people are waking up to realize that the longer you are in darkness or in denial the longer you are deluding yourself so when you start acknowledging your negative emotions that arise you are learning and starting to accept more of yourself and this path of self development and actualizing using self development utilizes this method of unconditionally loving and accepting yourself so given the state your world is in you may notice that you are not seen you are not liking what you are seeing and that is a sign of you waking up because remember what is a third eye for the third eye activation is more about being able to see through the illusions to see the reality exactly the way it is and for most of you the reality is not pleasant so acceptance of your emotions and that of the reality that is unpleasant for you is the first step towards inner healing instead of denying that and whitewashing it with love and light because you cannot stay in denial if you are truly spiritual spirituality requires you to see the things you do not like and accept it that yes this is the state of being there is war there is recession there are many people who do not have jobs there is inflation cost of living is higher the faster you acknowledge these unpleasant things the faster you can decide what do you wish to do with that information how do you wish to create and forge your reality coming from this place of awareness so the first path of inner healing is accepting reality the way it is which is the way it is right now and when we use the word acceptance we don't mean making peace with it or being okay with it 
what we mean by the word acceptance is acknowledgement that this is how things are and this is where I am with respect to this reality. The second part of inner healing is tending to your own emotions because you will notice that a lot of your negative emotions come up in protest to what is going on. You may feel anger, you may feel sadness, you may feel anxiety, you may feel a host of other emotions. The second part of inner healing is allowing those emotions instead of suppressing them, denying them, running away from them, or only practicing spiritual bypassing by saying, oh no, I need to be in the state of positivity always and deny all the negative emotions that's arising within me. That is the first mistake most people make who have just begun their spiritual journey. This is why inner healing is so important because you cannot have a full-fledged self-actualization when you are denying the parts of you that is unhappy with the reality. Accept it. Accept, yes, I am angry. And yes, my anger is valid given what situation I am in. Acceptance, acknowledgement and appreciation of what you feel is the first step for inner healing because you will notice the faster you have started accepting this is what I feel and it doesn't feel good, but I will allow it. This feeling is valid. The, soon, the sooner you start accepting your feelings, the faster those feelings will subside because now it is seen and heard. So this is like baby steps in acknowledging what arises within you. And once you feel some calm and composure, you can decide what do you wish to do in your life, which is in your preference which changes your reality and that begins with you. So if you are hoping the world will change on its own, that is not how you self-actualize. The world will go the way it wants to, but what you can change is you because then you will not be a match to this version of Earth. Once you start doing the work on yourself, you will be matched to a different version of Earth. So when you start doing the healing on yourself, you will suddenly start observing changes in the world outside, even when you have not done anything. Then comes the activity of self-awareness. How are you feeling most often times? What are you feeling in your body? Most humans experience emotions in their body. So if you are feeling positive, it will feel lightness in your body or some specific part of your body will feel differently as compared to when you are feeling angry, sad, what have you. Those emotions will also appear as heaviness, tightness, pain, discomfort in your body. So start being more aware about your body and how you feel throughout the day. And ask yourself, what is making me feel this way? In this way, you are allowing inner reflection and the parts of you that were never seen or heard. This allows to have a deeper connection with yourself, slowly and gradually. Now, remember, the outside world is a reflection of your inner reality. So when you start deeply healing and connecting, simply the act of connecting and asking yourself shows your interest and desire in getting to know yourself and prioritizing your emotions. For those who create the reality of not feeling important in other people's life, usually deprioritize their own emotions. So this is your path to feeling important in other people's life by choosing yourself to be important, by listening to yourself first. Because when you start treating yourself as important and listening to each and every emotion that arises, 
you will see a change in how other people react to you because now you are driving your decision based on what feels good or bad for you. So when you are having a negative interaction with others, pay attention to your body. What do you feel? Why don't you feel good? Why does it feel this way? And you will get answers and insights about your interaction quality with somebody. Maybe they are not treating you well. Maybe they are disrespecting you. Maybe they are not valuing you. Or maybe they are violating your boundaries. What is causing those feelings within you? In this way, when you start the self-awareness journey, it brings you to rapid inner healing because now you can choose to decide how you wish to interact with this person in the future. Do you want to draw your boundaries? Do you want to set your preferences? Do you want to tell them how you want them to treat you? Or do you want to simply let go of this person from your life? This can only happen when you have self-awareness about your own emotion and you care about your emotion. This process of simply acknowledging and acting to make yourself feel better itself is deeply healing because those parts of you that felt unseen and unheard, especially your inner child, will start healing itself. And having the self-honesty. So when you start this journey of asking yourself about your emotions, you will notice a lot of unpleasant things come up, unpleasant things about you. This is where shadow work comes into the picture. So the fourth part of inner healing is all about doing the shadow work and accepting unconditional loving acceptance to all parts of you, including the parts of you that you do not like, understanding why it exists and what purpose it serves. It is still a part of you. In this manner, when you start exploring yourself, getting to know yourself deeply, you not only begin the healing journey, but you also begin the self-discovery journey, which in itself will lead to self-actualization. Because once you unconditionally love and accept yourself, suddenly the world around you will be beautiful. You will not be afraid to be treated badly or to lose things or to run out of money or food or peace, what have you. Because there is inner connection, inner harmony and inner balance which will reflect in your outer reality. So in this manner, you are changing your outer reality by changing your inner landscape. Because what you see outside is a direct reflection on, of your inner landscape. The way you treat yourself is how you treat others. The way others treat you is the way you treat yourself. So find in which ways you are not treating yourself well when somebody is ill-treating you. Or if you are not happy with your behavior towards others, ask yourself in which way you are suppressing parts of you and treating the parts the way you just treated that person. You will eventually see how the inner landscape had started changing and with that the outer landscape will also start changing this is a huge topic but for today this is what we would leave you with and this can be explored further with your questions now Thank you very much. Thank you, Matron. Uh, I would like to ask about to tell us more about yourself and in your consciousness, and uh, where you come, uh, which which dimension you are, and how many beings you are represent. Thank you. So, as Michael had shared a little bit about us in the past. 
you could compare us or our collective to be the bone structure of this universe as an analogy because there are many things that we do that is difficult to describe in human words because there are no human words to describe our experience. So we can only speak in metaphors. So we are in the 17th dimension and all the other Archangel Collective come out of us. They are part of us and they come out of us. What else would you like to know about us? Thank you. Um, how it's the easiest way that we can see uh, our parts when it needs to be healed? For example, it's like any pain in your body or how we can utilize very specifically that we need to work on some part of ourselves. Thank you. So... There are many therapeutic modalities available which specifically does this kind of work. You could explore that. It is more commonly referred to as parts work and there are different therapy models that you can use to explore this different parts of you. Each model has a different method, different technique. It doesn't matter in which way you explore. But if you want to start the journey with yourself, you can start with this compassionate inquiry about what you are feeling. And you can ask yourself, can I explore this part of me which is feeling this way? Can you step outside a bit so that I can see you clearly? And you can use this as a meditative experience you can visualize how this part of you that is feeling this emotion at this point of time in your mind's eye, those who cannot visualize, you can still imagine what this part is like within you using your own methods of imagination to get a feel of what it looks like, what does it want from you, what does it feel and why does it feel. You can start with the exploration in this manner and in this way every time you feel something strongly about you can explore which part of you is feeling this way and ask it to step outside of you so that you can see it clearly and have a conversation now many of you who are starting this journey will have it have difficulty doing the separation of dissociating yourself from the part because you'll still feel the emotions of the part in your body. The first sign of doing this work correctly is separating yourself from this part to have a good look. This is not to deny or suppress or reject the part. This is to separate yourself from the part's emotion so that you can see it for who it is. And in this manner, you will discover you have many other parts taking the seat of your consciousness which you may not have realized. This modality of internal family system of doing parts work is incredibly useful. You can explore books on these to understand how this work is done. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Um, I have another question. It's like, for example, like different emotions represent... I think is it is a different emotion represent different type of needs to be healed. For example, like anger. If some person feels more anger, it means that it's just connecting to something. Of course. That's yes. So one part can feel different emotions, but usually you will notice a pattern when you start your inner journey in this manner you will start noticing a pattern that one part of you usually feels angrier as compared to the others. And anger can come for different reasons. It could be a sign or a messenger that your boundary is violated. That's that time this part might step forward. And anger is an emotion to signal that your boundary is violated. 
or anger could also be a sign of being treated unfairly. Now, for different person, anger can represent different things. It's not the same for everybody. So this is why you need to do your inner reflection to see what does anger mean to you for that specific context that you feel angry about. Okay, thank you. Um, what about if we have some pain in our bodies? It's that meaning that we have suppressing the energy in our body and how yes. we can release. By simply allowing it. Allowance is the way to release. So when you are feeling discomfort or pain in the body, you can communicate with that part of the body. But because usually, psychologically speaking, these psychological parts or aspects of you reside in different parts of the body. So when one part of the body is in pain or discomfort or is suffering, maybe that part is suppressed or not allowed to be. So the first part is communicating with that part and asking, what is bothering you? And why do you feel the way you're feeling? And what can I do for you? That act itself will make the part seen and heard and express its concerns. And whatever it is feeling, whatever its emotion is, allow. By saying, I allow this emotion, even if it feels uncomfortable, I allow you, I allow you. And you will notice the emotions going down, the discomfort going down. The more you keep saying, I allow you, you'll notice the emotions going down, eventually dissolving. Or if it is a long lost suppressed part of you, which has been suppressed for a long time, it will bring up different layers of emotion. So when you are allowing the emotion, you will notice the first part of emotion is over and now it's replaced with a different emotion. And when you allow that, it will again dissolve gradually and then another layer will be revealed. And in this manner, you will eventually reach a point of total peace when you have allowed each layer of emotion that rose up. Is it making sense? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, do you have any process that you can suggest to us that will help us to utilize more clearly or like to hear more clearly about that inner uh, healing? There are Thank many you. processes. There are many, many, many processes that you can utilize. There is no dearth of processes. So one of them that we mentioned is internal family system, which is a specific modality of healing. But there are many, many processes. So this channel is better equipped to answer those questions because she can give you a list of things that you can do or explore to get started on this healing journey. Thank you. Um, I have another question about our relationship with our higher self during the periods of healing. Um, so every time when you want to know more about some part of our body that we feel like the suppressing energy, can we just go in a meditative state and just connect with our higher self and tell us more about that subject and what is what is about us? And how we Why can do you receive need to go to your higher self when you can directly access that part and speak with it. What is your need to access your higher self for this process? Are you not trusting your answers? Do you feel that you will not get the right answers? Do you feel that you will never get any answers? Because our body is consciousness. So we can talk straight to our bodies and every yeah. part of us, right? Yes. So why would you want to bring your higher self in this process is what we are trying to understand. Um, I don't know why I was just thinking about it. Thank you for clear up that. Thank no, you. a lot of you are bypassing your physical body and wanting to go outside to your higher self for guidance. Why wouldn't you listen to the guidance of your body? Your body also has consciousness and your body's emotions are also valid. That yes, is exactly what spiritual bypassing is. Ignoring your emotions and going outside, seeking guidance. That is exactly why the world is where it is. 
because you're not respecting your own emotions and your own body or the intuition that comes from it. This is self-actualization, getting to know yourself from the body perspective instead of running away from it. Because a lot of you think the body consciousness is the ego. And the ego has such a bad reputation on your planet. Well, your ego are the ignored parts of you which are trying to get your attention for something that it feels important. It is not trying to intentionally sabotage you. It's trying to bring your attention to something that you're avoiding and ignoring. So those who have not truly self-actualized have put a bad reputation to ego, including some of your monks. So ego is not bad. If you make friends with your ego, your ego will become you know, the very vehicle for enlightenment. Don't make differentiations between your higher self and your ego. Because if you are not friends with yourself, your body and all aspects of you, then you will have difficulty making friends with the higher self because how will you know that you are receiving the information from the higher self and not from your ego? How will you differentiate that? Because sometimes your higher self will also ask you to do things that would not make sense as much as your ego would. So what's the difference? Why create this differentiation? Why create this separation? Merge your consciousness with the higher self and the ego. And the first step is respecting the ego instead of calling it the devil or the evil. This understanding, the gradual understanding of why some parts of you act in weird fashion in weird circumstances will give you more idea about who you are and where those points are originating. Remember the session you had with the channel? Yes. So you discovered something about yourself, yes? Yes. Would you I have discover discovered, a lot of things. Would you have discovered why you had that fear if you had not gone deep exploring it? The origins, the root cause? Yes. Yes. Didn't it bring yes. healing I, and I, to you? Yes, I didn't trust myself that I can exactly yes so this process that we described of getting to know yourself every time you feel any emotion is going to build this trust because these aspects these parts of you sometimes they can be literally body parts trying to communicate its needs to you will feel heard and understood and it will start trusting you and you will start trusting it and this is how the mutual trust will develop when you have become fully confident about yourself and fully trusting of yourself. Is it making sense? Yes, yes, it does. Yes, it, it, it makes uh, a lot of sense. Yes, yes. Are you agreeing for the sake of agreeing or is there an embodiment of what we are saying? Yes, it, it makes a lot of sense because I was thinking about how we can integrate the ego and the heart and our spirits all together and we can cooperate and we can re-emerge all together. That was my thinking yesterday, to be honest. The integration so of our ego. this is how you develop the inner harmony. Most of you are running yes. to get your higher self into the picture because of your deep unworthiness issues. And it's not just about you. It's what is happening everywhere with everyone. A lot of you are into spirituality because you have deep sense of unworthiness. And apparently speaking with the higher self makes you feel, oh, I am special. Now I can speak with the unknown. First, start speaking with yourself. That is what is going to make you special because this is not what anybody is doing right now. This is why we bring this message. Once you start yes. communicating with yourself, your self-worth will in improve your insecurities will melt away and you will know you can trust yourself to do anything and manifest anything that you wish, including abundance or good health or good relationship or what have you. Because those reflect the relationship you have with yourself. So if you're not abundant, you are blocking the part of you that wants to play because you feel play is not okay, it doesn't make money. 
you are suppressing that part. So when you begin conversing yourself, you get to know those parts and what those intentions are. And that is what will bring and build this trust with that part and you. And eventually, when you allow that part of you to play, suddenly abundance will come in your life because now you are allowing a portion of yourself that you had suppressed long back. And now you're allowing yourself to fully be you. Similarly, your relationships with others will improve when you start respecting and listening to yourself. Because again, when you have problems with others, chances are high you are treating yourself exactly the way they are treating you. So this is what the compassionate inquiry is about. If somebody is disrespecting you, ask yourself, in which ways am I disrespecting myself? And see what answer comes up. This will be a to and fro process. You may not always get the answers right away. This is a process. This is a practice. Because the parts of you that has long been unseen and unheard may not trust you to share its truth openly because it clearly senses your distrust towards it. So first make friendship with you by listening, by simply listening to your emotions and paying attention why you feel the way you feel. Is it making sense? Yes, it does. It does, it does make much sense now to me. Yes, you're absolutely right. I agree 100%. About Thank you very much. May I ask another question? Yes. Um, how we can um step out from our um negative emotion during the daytime? How we can center ourselves and getting back to our hearts by allowing it, as we said. When you experience it, ask yourself, pause and stop what you're doing. Ask, why am I feeling this way? Where in the body am I feeling? Start communicating with that part, wherever you're feeling that emotion. What do I feel? Don't try to intellectualize or analyze. Just simply dive into your body. Where do I feel this emotion? How does it feel like? And simply allowing it, I allow you. Allow that emotion to be instead of trying to run away from it, to move away from it, let go away, just go away. I don't want you. Say, I want you. I allow you. I appreciate you. I acknowledge you. Simply use these words. I, you are valid. You are allowed here. I acknowledge your presence and see what happens, how fast your emotions dissolve. Now, if you're using to dissolve the emotion, that's the wrong intention. And that is where the conflict will happen. That is when the emotion will not go away. Approach it from a place of compassion and understanding. Is it making sense? Yeah. Compassion, understanding and love that you love that part and allow it to be what it is and to show you. Simply allow that emotion, even if you don't like it, even if it doesn't feel good in the body. When you start doing this process for the first time, you will have a huge flurry of emotion coming out because it's the first time your body has realized you actually care about it enough to allow the emotions to come out. Many of you will experience physical healing because of this process. Because this process is deeply healing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have another question. It's, um, so it's every relationships, is it every relationships like reflecting back to us what we need to work on it usually? Yes, but here you may be a little bit confused and that is part of your journey. So, There are many of you who are not drawing boundaries with people who you should draw boundaries with. So this understanding of why your relationship with somebody, whatever, whoever that is, the way it is, it's not a direct one-to-one -one reflection. It could also be where you are not setting boundaries where you should be setting Please. or where you are not prioritizing your own feelings or emotion where you should be 
you are more caring about the other instead of yourself. So you are not practicing unconditional loving with yourself, but more concerned about people pleasing and what they think and how they react or whether they reject you or whether they judge you. So exploring relationships could be a little bit more complex than understanding yourself. And this is where we recommend working with somebody who is an expert in this field because they will help you unravel those complexities. It's not a simple black and white relationship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, another another question is um, um, during uh, this uh, golden age of that's how everybody called it the sessions. Uh, inner healing gets very important. What is another thing that is very important for our collective consciousness at this time? So we need to know for every one of us. Self-awareness. Why do you think we say that? Because most of the people is thinking that it's about outside the world, not about inner world and about yourself only. That's self-awareness. Most is, people right? are drawing conclusions based on the world outside. They are looking for validations of their worth from outside. Oh, if I buy this, then I will look cool. If I wear this, I will look cool. So everything is geared towards external validation. Oh, I have to get married by this age and have these many children by this age. Otherwise, people will think something is wrong with me. Again, external validation. Most people are driving their life based on what other people are going to think about them or how they are perceived in the outer world. The reality is going inwards to become aware why you are doing those things. And do those things make you happy? What gives you real happiness? What would make you happy? If you start asking those questions, you will discover the things that make you happy has nothing to do with others and sometimes even opposite of what others want. And this is where most of you end up in conflict. Those of you who are waking up will realize that your family's expectations of you or your friends or whatever, your employer's expectation of you does not match with what makes you fulfilled and happy. If you have even reached yes, this should. stage, you are already awakened. And now the point is, what do you wish to do about it? Sacrifice your own happiness to make others happy or to forge your own path? A lot of you will not be making any decision and stuck in procrastination because there is inner conflict. And this is why we say self-awareness. Which path do you want to choose? There are so many paths. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Do you have anything else that you want to share with us and as individually or collectively? We yeah. shared what needed to be shared already. So there are different parts of spiritual enlightenment. And if that interests whoever is going to watch this, choose your path. What is your path? If you are watching this, then probably... You have something to take away from this. So adopt the path that you need to towards your self-actualization. But inner healing is going to be a part of it, whether you like it or not, whether you accept it or not, whether you want to do it or not. This is one of the fastest way for self-actualization among with others. So it's your choice, really, what you wish to do. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We'll take our leave now. Have a good day.
Thank you. Oh, wow, that was intense. <laughs> yeah, it was very intense. <laughs> How do you yeah. feel? I feel very I feel very good. Very good. And um it's like um the most of the topics it was um it was the thing that I was thinking. They discover and they will share information that I was thinking for the last week about myself and the people around me and my children and how we can manage actually about the ego. I was listening, I was drawn about the ego as a consciousness and the, the, our mind and our hearts, you know, because they're that's we always separate them and how we can integrate those parts within us and how we can start cooperating with them. Don't like the, exactly what they was sharing now. That was my thoughts. Even yesterday, yesterday I was thinking, why am I always saying to the, that part of me that I don't want to feel that or I don't want to like be like this and I don't like myself when I'm like angry and that I don't like that I'm feeling something about someone, you know? And then they was when they are saying that I'm really, really me as a person, I'm really reaching more to find information outside of me instead of listening to myself. Why I feel like that way. Or why I'm like, when I'm like communicating with someone, I have like something like expectation and at the same time resistance to him. What is that person shows me? You know, I'm always thinking about that a lot. Recently, like maybe a month. Because re actually, you know, like I'm stuck. I can feel it. So you know, when you... Usually, when you... this is how things happen. So I did not know what topic it's going to be today. And I was uh, like, okay, I mean, I'm open to whatever being is wanting to come and whatever topic. So when I received like inner healing, I was like, hmm, interesting. Why do they bring this up? Because usually when um, whenever I'm channeling, and this is true for all ch channels, I believe it's the, the topic is always going to be relevant for the person listening to it as well as the person who's channeling it. So I have been uh, like... I anyway do a lot of personal development work on a daily basis so for now like in 2022 my theme was finding my purpose 2023 was living it and 2024 is like self-actualization knowing who I am that is my major theme and this is what I'm working That's awareness. on yeah so because <laughs> because because this has been my theme I've been doing some really deep work especially parts work because this is something I had stopped doing in the last two years I was focusing more on limiting beliefs but then I realized that no I have to come back to this the, things were pointing towards this and yeah so it serves you it serves me and it always joy to find out how these topics always resonate with the person sitting in front of me <laughs> exactly it's very interesting that you share that because you know like uh uh I was doing I was doing so many things and I have so many ideas in the same time I'm not happy you know you know it's just I'm I'm missing something you know for example you know like something it's not okay with me with myself you know and that's I'm easy so I'm triggered only for my kids which is very interesting no one else, maybe my neighbor, because she's right there, and she's completely different, opposite to me, and just whatever. But really, it's just because maybe my inner child, and last night I was thinking something very interesting about, I was saying something to my daughter, and I'm like, I'm comparative my daughter to my inner child, without even realizing that, you know? I was always saying it's I'm giving them so much, extra when i was receiving in my kid and in, in my childhood and i'm like and i'm like why am i even saying that you know i mean why i'm comparing myself to my mom or there to my other child you know which is completely not okay and i didn't realize that until last night you know like i'm always was saying then you have to be grateful you have to be appreciative about me about maybe, my time maybe you are not giving yourself enough Yes, exactly. You're in a child. That's why you feel like, oh, they are not appreciating what I did not have. Well, they don't know what you all did the time. not have. 
yes exactly because time to nourish your inner child once you start nourishing it will feel grateful and nourished and then your desire for you know uh, wanting them to feel grateful to you for what you are doing for them will vanish it will just vanish because now mm-hmm. you are nourished you will you are not feeling like you are giving them and not giving yourself i think right now the giving is happening only outside and not inside so when you are nourishing exactly. yourself at the same time giving then like giving the surplus then you will not feel this way and because um you're saying something to someone and because he has never experienced anything like that they cannot really uh um they, they cannot even realize it you know it's like exactly how everything is spirituality is saying the words doesn't teach the book doesn't teach but the experience teach you know like you have to go through some process for like self realization to really understand who you are and otherwise it doesn't work it's just theory <laughs> yeah i know wait i'll stop the recording